Sean, it is great to have the opportunity to speak to you today. And it's draft week. It's the big week. It's the week that everybody's been waiting for. How are you feeling just a few days away from knowing where you're going to be playing in the NFL? Um, really, man, just more anxious, um, ready to find out where, where home's about to be for the next couple of years. And yeah, I'm just I'm prepared, excited. Uh, can't wait to uh, uh, just have fun with it, have fun with my family, friends, um, and just excited, man. Um, this is something that you dream for, and it, it, it dreams come true, so you work hard. So I can't imagine what it's like. You see, people like me, we spend a lot of time talking about, you know, where players are going to go and who they're going to play for. But for you, it's a life-changing thing. You know, where, where am I going to live? You know, is it going to be somewhere yeah. hot? Is it going to be somewhere cold? Is it going to be somewhere that I know? Is it going to be the other end of the country? This is this is a huge thing, isn't it? Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm, I'm very, very anxious for that. Um, just to see where I'm going to be at, see if it's going to be cold, hot, warm, sleet, snow, whatever it is. Like, the people I'm about to be around, different accents I'm about to hear. So I'm just just excited. Um, and just I just can't wait. Can't wait till my name get caught. <laughs> Now, you've had a busy time recently. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've been doing with cleats on the ground? Um, with cleats on the ground, so that's just um, me giving back um, knowledge, um, giving people confidence. Uh, I just talked to the juvie, juvie kids this morning, just giving them confidence that they could do it. Life is not over. It's not, it's, you're young. Like, you got a lot of time just to correct the things that you have done wrong and get better at it. Um, talked to a couple of high school kids today, just giving them a word of wisdom on how college football is, how it's only really 3%, really 2% that only go to college, below one that goes to the NFL, like, and they got to always have a backup plan. It's just trying to give them knowledge and just inspire kids to make them happy, um, give them confidence they could do it. Because a lot of people just don't even have the confidence they could do it. And just let them know, like, respect the people that you're around because you don't know who you're talking to at the end of the day. Um, I have been around a lot of CEOs. Um, Triple H with WWE, things like that. So just respect people around because you don't know where they're going to end up in life. So, Because I imagine it must be quite a thing, you know, to be a talented football player, to have interest from colleges, to have dreams of the NFL. And like you say, you know, for a small percentage of people, you'll realise those dreams. For the vast majority of others, mm -hmm. you're going to come up against things in your life. You're going to have to adjust. You're going to have to have a, a plan B. And I imagine that is something that a lot of people they're probably not prepared for. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. A lot of people are not prepared for all they think is football, football, football. Football stops one day. Your life keeps on moving. So you just got to find things that you're excited about, what, what drives you. Like I told the kids today, do things that drive you, make you happy. Don't do things because you have to do it to make money. Do things that make you happy to make money. So... Is this a long process, you know, the months leading up to the draft, preparing for a pro day? What is it like? Um, I've just been working out. Um, I'm really almost healthy, um, really like 90, 95%. Um, so I've been working out, getting better, working on my craft, educating other kids, making other people better and not just focusing on myself. Um, and trying to get a lot of rest. It's been hard to get rest. Um, just find different occupations I've been reading. Um, and like since I've been home, just spending time with my family and brother come home Wednesday so to spend some time with him, being around my sister, making sure she's good with track, my, my dad and mom, um, my two dogs that are here. I'm about to go see my other dog tomorrow that my girl got. So just spending time with family, friends, and making sure that everybody's straight um, and, and making everybody proud. So uh, Pro Day, you run a 443, I think. I think that was the, the number. Yeah, sir, I ran a 443. 37 and a half yes. inch foot. You know, how happy are you with that, given that you have had this turf toe issue? Um, it just shows that I'm, I'm still fast with the injury. Um, I could play injured, which I have the whole season last year, even 2019, I played injured. So it just shows that I could still move. I could still be fast. I'm still fluid. I still got everything, even though I have a couple of injuries that I was dealing with. And um, really, I'm almost healthy, really healthy, in my opinion. I feel, feel very, very, very well right now. So it just shows I'm very, very fast, and it shows that, I could really hit the four threes if I was part healthy. So now I do. Uh, you know, we I think anybody who kind of writes and talks about the draft will do just never-ending mock drafts. And if I showed you sort of my mock drafts eighteen months ago, I had you in the top fifteen. You know, I'm watching Ohio State, and I'm watching you know the cornerbacks. You know, crazy group of guys really that you've played with, and and you sort of see the talent. Mm -hmm. You're working 
predominantly in the slot the season before last and, you, and you're really showing up. You know, how would you describe your versatility, what you can do? Because you're not a smaller slot guy. You know, you're six foot, you've got size, you've got 33 and a half inch arms, you've got the length, but you've had experience of playing inside and out. Um, I had experience playing all. I played safety too a little bit. Um, if you go back to 2018, I played a lot of safety. On um, 2019, I played safety, Penn State game, stuff like that. So it just shows that I can do everything. I learned very quick. I'm very versatile. Can guard. I guarded every position to the best tight ends that are getting drafted today, to the, the KJ Hammers that are in the league, to the big receivers that are in college or in the league. I, I guarded every position. I could blitz. I could tackle. I can fill in gaps. I can do everything. So it just shows my versatility to do everything. And that's what I've been noticing. Having more versatility have is a longevity in the league, even the older you get. So they can just move you to safety if you're getting old and not as fast. So they just move to safety, go right, right, line, right, line, make tackles. So it just shows I can do everything. It shows I can learn. And it shows that um, a lot of people won't say this, but I'm a winner. Um, you look, if you look at my background, one four state championships, four big tens, national championship younger. All, a lot of awards, even in college, high school, things like that. So it just shows that I'm a winner. I'm very versatile, and I can do everything, regardless of what I did. 2020, if you really go back, everybody year was messed up COVID, and that's just how life is. You go through adversity, and everybody asks me, "Do I got regrets?" No regret because you got to go through adversity to grow as a person. And I, I know I grew as a person. I grew as a football player. I grew as a person. And I'm just excited. I'm, and I, I'm excited I went through that because it shows things I need to work on. Even though I was injured, it shows things I need to work on. It shows you how to get through things regardless of what you're going through. It shows you how to smile through stuff regardless of don't not putting the team down and showing your physical expression. Just putting the team first. It shows that you put the team first and not yourself first. Because if I really wanted this, I could have played the first game opted out. You know what I'm saying? Or just not played at all because if I was focused on myself. No, it's about the team. It's about winning for me. So... Because, I, you know, I, I noticed that. And there's a lot of guys who maybe played a couple of games and they thought, nah, you know, not for me. It's not going how I want it. I'll, I'll declare. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll stop playing. I'll prepare for the draft. And you didn't. You know, you stuck with it. Um, I thought that, and I'm not just saying this to you because you're sat here now. You know, I've written articles about this. I've said this consistently throughout this, you know, the last sort of eight months, really. I don't really understand where some of the people are coming from with you because I've always thought high draft pick, Obvious skill set, great talent, five star potential, and I, and I just think some of the the talk around you has been incredibly harsh. Do you listen to any of that stuff? Does it motivate you? Do you pay any attention to any of this? Because some guys do, and some guys so are shooting it out. So I don't pay attention to it. it. Is what people say that everybody has your opinion. When you do good, everybody wants to. Clap and be your friend. When you do bad, people fall away. That's just life. That's, that's just how it works. So you see who your real friends and your real fans are, things like that. Um, a lot of people just ain't go through the things I went through. It, it's just life. Man. They don't, they be like, oh, he sucks. But they don't, they don't never say about my injuries. They don't never say nothing about that. They just say he sucks and things like that. But it's like, okay, it's life. Like when I'm about to cry because y'all say I'm suck, like at the end of the day, whatever, what you think about yourself is what you're going to be. So what other people say, it don't, it don't hurt my feelings. It don't do none of that. It's just, that's your opinion. And then when I do good, don't try to hop on the bandwagon again, like y'all was at the You see what I'm saying? So it is what it is. That's their opinion. And they, scouts know what I could do. Scouts knew what would happen, what was wrong with me. So it's not, I don't, I don't care what people say. I just focus on myself and make sure I'm good regardless. So we're still in this, this global pandemic world situation a lot of people are getting vaccinated obviously hopefully this is all going to change and, and everything we're back to normal soon fingers crossed what has it been like talking to teams how many of these kind of like zoom meetings do you have and because it's not like, like if you go for a meeting with a team usually you have to fly there and you know you have a day there and then that's kind of it you know are you getting a lot of calls are the guys in the draft getting having to have a lot of meetings and you're having to sort of save time and, and schedule a diary out so that you can make sure that you've got to do everything you've got to do in this period. So what I do, I, um, everything is through Zoom. Uh, I talk to 30 out of 32 teams. Um, I just be myself regardless at the end of the day. Don't focus on nothing. Just be myself, have fun, smile, 
tell them the truth and, and just don't lie about nothing. You know? if, if they want me, they're going to take me. That's just how I take it. If the team wants me, they're going to take me. Um, they know what I can do on the field. Um, they know my history, what happened. They know everything. Um, so it, it is what it is. I just, right now, I'm just enjoying the time. It's a dream that's coming true. And when I get on the field, I'm going to progress. I'm going to do things to help the team and just try to have a long, long career where I make my family happy, make myself happy, make money for my kids, and just go from there. And that, that's just the goal. Um, it's not to be just be a first round, to be a second round, a third round, and be good. Like, just I want to continue to get better. So that's all. Tell us a bit about yourself. You know, who inspires you? Who supports you? What is your background? Oh, yeah. Um, my parents definitely inspired me. Dad did 20 years in the military. She so was definitely in and out of the house. I understand his parents. I have a single mother. My mother is my 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 backbone. She does everything for me. She 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 did everything for me, especially my dad being in the military, being out of the house a lot and stuff like that. So um, I just continue to, to get better. Uh, I'm a quiet person. I love to be by myself. I'm very formal or orientated. Um, barely go out. If I go out, it's probably with family or friends or with my girl. I go out with her sometimes. Um, and, and that's the things I like to watch TV. I love other sports. I don't just love football. I was a great basketball player. Um, I would watch um, like, um, with water polo, different things. I watch a lot of different sports and I just like to learn. Um, like in my career, I definitely want to deal with sports. I definitely want to do real estate in the future. So it's just, I just keep on progress and learning about life um, and just continue to get better. And I like to help the community. And that's the type of person I am. I like to help give back, make sure others are straight. If I see a homeless person, give them $100, things like that, buy them some food, put some clothes on their back, like the juvenile today. I'm going to go give a lot of my house, take care of them and make sure they're good so they can just be happy and remember this time that they have so they can always have something to fall back on. Uh, I told them to follow me on social media. Just hit me up if you need anything. I'm not one of them people that's too busy, too busy to make others great. But I, I ain't gonna say I'm gonna come visit you to make sure you're great. But we could talk on the phone. I'll give you time so I can meet. It, it, it's about making people, make, making people happy, man. And that's the type of person I just like making people happy. What are you most proud of of your time at Ohio State? Proud of graduating. That's probably the most proud thing. Graduating and becoming a captain. Those are two big dreams that you you have when you get to college. Um, I, I'm one of the first to graduate in a big university and do big things. So um, I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of my family just pushing me to get here and the sacrifice they did for me. So. And whichever team selects you in this draft, what are they going to get, Sean? What can they expect from you? Day one, training camp, what are you going to bring to the table? A leader, a leader mentality, somebody that works hard and very versatile, put me at any position, um, and, and, a, and a winner at the end of the day. At the end of the day, NFL is about winning and making plays, and I'm a winner and I make plays you know, no matter what. Uh, I make plays and I win games. And that's that's the number one thing about the NFL is making plays and winning games. And that's what they're going to get. Somebody that makes plays and win games. And you can put him anywhere. He very he learns very quick, understands the game. And he's a person that you love to be around. He's a person that motivates you. He's a person that you players are going to fall into, want to hang out with him all the time. And he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a person that changes the culture. So. John, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. The very best of luck this week. And I very much look forward to seeing your success in the NFL. All right. Yes, sir. I appreciate it.